Hello there YouTube hunters, Brad Goodspeed here. So pretty much done. I have a little detail work left to do. Um, maybe with the beard, some touch-ups on the paint. And actually I have to re-glue on part of the antler that got clipped off. Otherwise I'm pretty much there with my um, epoxy sculpt mask made under the tutelage, the tutorial on the Stan Winston School website by Bruce D. Mitchell, an artist who's done a bunch of these kinds of masks. I've made many masks in the past. I've done leather work. I've done a lot of epoxy work. I'd done, I had a lot of these um, techniques sort of in the arsenal, but I had never thought to put them all together into an epoxy mask, as I've described in some of uh, the other videos on this subject. But um, a quick overview, because I tend to ramble. So, once again, the antlers were purchased off of eBay. They're resin replicas. The claws uh, here are bear claws from Tandy Leather, but the rest of it is epoxy sculpt. Um, basically, I made an under sculpt in clay. Well, you go back and see the old videos, you'll see how that works. Um, what I did here was I drilled a, t a bunch of uh, little holes. This was always the intention in the uh, the chin sort of space, and I. Um, knotted up pieces of leather strapping and ran them through. I actually have a few decorative beads and stuff in at the ends of some of them and I, I may put some more things in there but uh, that'll come with time. Um, regarding the paint, this is a technique I've always done the um, when a, on a textured surface where you won't be airbrushing because airbrushing kind of fills in texture. Um, on a textured surface like this, I've always done the antiquing and then dry brushing technique. Um, but here I did not. Here, again according to the tutorial, was a um, interesting technique I had never tried. Where basically, after the mask was done, and it was all done in white epoxy sculpt, I painted the whole thing um, black, and then sanded it down so the highlights were white and the recesses were black. And again, this is Bruce D. Mitchell's technique. And um, then I started, uh, then I mixed up a mixture of airbrush, uh, clear airbrush paint, transparent airbrush paint, a little bit of a uh, raw umber or burnt umber, I can't remember which, uh, acrylic paint, and uh, Perlex uh, pigmented uh, powders. So they're basically, that's what provides the sheen. I wanted this to look like uh, unlike Bruce D. Mitchell's mask that he makes in the tutorial, uh, I didn't want it to look as bronze as his. I wanted it to look more like it could be wood or bronze. I wanted a, sort of it sitting in a nowhere's land between the two. And um, so you basically mix these powdered pigments into your paint. And you just wash this very watered down slurry of color over the entire thing. And what happens is you have a sort of a transparent mixture and the black and white highlights that were underneath show through. So that's where you get your tonal differences in the recesses. But the, um, the color is provided by the semi-transparent um, mixture that you put on top. So I don't want to give away too many of the techniques because you all really should look, look into the tutorial and I, I don't want to feel like I'm ripping the guy off. I mean. The tutorial did cost $40 for both parts, but I mean, it was, um, even if you don't plan on making one of these masks, the number of techniques and tools that he reveals in it is, um, was uh, very valuable. And again, I, I, you know, I, I knew a lot of this stuff already because I've done mask making, but uh, to someone who's looking to start off, even if they don't want to make this kind of mask, there's so many techniques in that tutorial that I would definitely, definitely recommend it. So just another brief look. Oh, and sorry, I did end up going back and dry brushing with some other other uh, Pearl X tinted um, colors. Like there's a slight hint of green, and then a golder one just to catch the highlights a little bit more. So I should mention that. Um, regarding the leather work, uh, I painted the inside of the mask black. I built. It's probably hard to see, but I built um, these uh, velvet lined. Uh, pads out of um, 
he recommends using a certain kind of foam called L200, but I had trouble tracking that down. So uh, a website I found online told me that that, that uh, thick craft foam you can get at like a Michaels is the same thing. And I found it really good. I could shape it, I could uh, sand down the edges of the foams, the foam to get kind of a beveled edge to where it's going to glue down, wrapped it in velvet, and then uh, used barge cement to um, connect the pads to the mask. There's pads here, here, and then the large one up top. Uh, the leather strapping, I did all the leather work um, myself. Uh, this was a three quarter inch strap that I bought from Tandy Leather, but it was a little too thick, so I had, I just made these pieces with that. This piece was from a hide that I had that I cut because it was a little bit thinner, and I cut my own straps here and here. Um, the ring is kind of a necessary element so that you can distribute those um, these guys um, at angles so they come down sort of in a circular pattern around the head. Um, it's all riveted in by hand. Uh, I don't own a riveting machine. And then where it attaches to the mask I used uh, Chicago screws. The Chicago screws are like um, Basically, it's a one a post screws in, is is uh, goes through on on the outside, and then the screw uh, comes in on the inside. And I put another little piece of leather on the inside of each so that they don't um, it distributes the weight against the epoxy sculpt um, a little bit better. Um, so that's pretty much how it goes. I never leave projects alone forever, so I'm sure I'm gonna tweak this at some point. I'm going to do more with the beard, I think, um, just to give it a bit more life. Um, but uh, that's my mask. Um, some people have asked about what the costume is going to be. I'm actually going to extend the costume I wore last year. If you see my haunt video, it's at the very beginning. That's me and my mask. Um, I'm just going to use that costume and just lose the mask and then enhance uh, enhance the costume maybe with some more leather work. So I'm really into leather work recently. It's a great way to um, build costumes and stuff. But that's the mask. Um, I hope I covered everything I had meant to. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. And uh, happy haunting.